Section 1 Jack is on his way to Margaret's house party. He is phoning her for directions. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. First, you have another chance to look at questions 1 to 5. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Jack has got lost on his way to Margaret's party. He is phoning her for directions. Hello, is that Margaret? Yes, who's speaking? Margaret, it's Jack. I think I'm lost. I can't see a signpost and... Jack, so where are you now? Well, I'm a bit confused about the directions, but I'm at a T-junction. What can you see around you? I can see a pub on the corner. Can you see the name of the pub? Wait a minute. Let me see. It's hard to see in the dark. Yes, I can read it now. It's called the Lion's mm, Head. Oh, the Lion's Head. OK, well, then you're not too far away. Go straight ahead through the traffic lights to the next T-junction. Sorry, I didn't hear you. What did you say? I said just go through to the next T-junction. OK. Now what? Well, there's a park in front of you and a large two-storey building on the corner. Ah, uh, yes, I can see them. OK, so now turn left. Hang on, you're coming up the street, so you'll have to turn right. OK, got it. What's the name of your street? It's Wesley Street, W-E-S-L-E-Y, number 70. We're the fifth house on the left. You should see a red letterbox and some bushes in front of the house. OK. Fifth house, number 70. I should be there soon. Am I late for the party? It sounds like things are happening there. No, it's only just started. That's good. I should be there in the next ten minutes. See you soon. Jack hangs up and walks on. Seven minutes later, he calls Margaret again, as he still can't find the house. You now have some time to look at questions six to ten. As you listen, answer questions 6 to 10. Who's speaking? Hi, Margaret. It's Jack again. Sorry to bother you. Listen, would you mind doing me a favour? Of course. What? Could you tell Mike I have got his camera? I've tried to send him a text message, but it's not going through. Oh, he's not here yet. Oh, dear. He said he'd be there early. He might be lost too. OK, I'll call him. What's his number? 0482-563379. Oh, so that's 0485? No, no, 0482-563379. OK, I'll call him right away. But where are you now? Well, I'm in your street, but I still can't find your house. I can't see the numbers very clearly, or a red letterbox. It's pretty dark. I thought you said it was easy to find. Oh, OK, wait there. I'll come outside and get you. All right, then. And don't worry about calling Mike. I'll try to call him now. Hang on. There's someone coming down the street. It looks like Mike. Oh, and I can see the letterbox now. It was hidden behind a bush. See you soon. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2 on page 4 of your listening test booklet. 
Section 2. You will hear a recorded message giving information about an animal park. First, you will have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully to the first part of the message and answer questions 11 to 15. Welcome to the Australian Wildlife Park Information Line. The Australian Wildlife Park is very proudly owned and operated by an Australian family, John and Amanda Brooks, who operate the Australian Wildlife Park with their children, David and Sandra. The family doesn't receive any government assistance. It's solely funded by tourists visiting the park. Thank you for your support and assistance. When the Brooks family purchased the Australian Wildlife Park in 1987, the park housed a small collection of animals and birds on a modest five acre or two hectare property. A few years later, the park doubled in size when the family purchased the adjoining property. Also, the collection of animals started to boom. In May 2003, the family designed and built a new park in the public open space. Once again, more than doubling in size. The park now features about 200 species with more than 2,000 head of animals, birds and reptiles. Regarding the entry fee, adults pay $23, children aged 3 to 14 pay $10, age pensioners are $17 and students are $16. One of the great things about the Australian Wildlife Park is that all of the attractions are included in the entry fee. No extra money is needed around the park, so make the most of your experience. All shows, talks, photo opportunities and animal food are included in your entry fee. In addition, the Australian Wildlife Park is open every day of the year, from 9am to 5.30pm, except Christmas Day, 25th of December. Before the final part of the message, you now have 20 seconds to look at questions 16 to 20. Now answer questions 16 to 20. Several attractions are available to visitors to the Australian Wildlife Park. Firstly, you can meet the koalas between 10am and 4.30pm. Here, people can view the koala colony in a natural environment. Another attraction is to feed the kangaroos between 9am and 5.30pm. Visitors can take a walk through the kangaroo enclosure, viewing them in a natural environment. Kangaroo food is provided and the kangaroos are very friendly. Also enjoyable are the wombats. At 11am, 2pm and 3.45pm, there are interactive shows where the team is delighted to introduce you to these popular animals. Other attractions that may interest you are an interactive farmyard, suitable for children of all ages. Animal food is provided and the animals are very friendly. In addition, the working farm is where the country comes to town. Visitors can milk a cow, bottle feed a lamb, watch farm dogs gathering the sheep. All the excitement of a real Australian farm. When they ask for volunteers, be sure to put your hand up. Everyone can get involved. We at the Australian Wildlife Park hope all our visitors have an enjoyable time. See you soon. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3 on page 6 of your listening booklet. Section 3 You will hear two students, called Richard and Shirley, 
discussing the information they have collected so far for a group project. First, you will have half a minute to look at questions 21 to 30. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 30. Hi Shirley. Glad you could meet me at the weekend to talk about the research we have to do on energy. Yes, Richard. I think it's important that we stay focused on the specific area of our research, energy consumption. Did you know that the demand for electricity is growing faster than coal, oil and gas can supply it? Yes, indeed. Coal and oil, which I discovered are also known as fossil fuels, could have disastrous effects on world climate. My research supports you. I also found out that the weather could be affected by global warming. However, a range of fuels are used around the world. Did you know that the most common fuels are the fossil fuels, with oil accounting for almost half at 45%? Coal and natural gas are equal next at 20% with nuclear power being the lowest at 7%. Other sources of energy are also near the bottom at 8%. Before the final part of the conversation, you now have 20 seconds to look at questions 27 to 30. Now answer questions 27 to 30. That information will be useful when we look at the different energy sources in detail. We also need to look at the pros and cons of each type of energy. We've already said that fossil fuels increase the world's temperature, but we also need to mention the most serious issue, that these three types of fuel are finite, meaning they will not last forever. Another major disadvantage is that by burning coal and oil in particular, chemicals are released into the atmosphere which combine with water to fall back to earth and damage both plant and animal life. That really sounds useful. If you focus on coal, oil and gas, I'll look into nuclear power. It is common knowledge that nuclear power stations create radioactive waste, but I'm particularly interested in how this unwanted waste product is dealt with safely. I'll also need to look at the effects on people living near these power stations. Yes, I think all those areas need exploring. Do you think I should also look into renewable energy sources, such as wind and sun, energy that never runs out? Don't you think it's an important area to consider? Yes, but I don't think I'll have enough time to look at it in enough detail. I also agree that we have enough to focus on until our next group meeting. So to finish, you could find some information on the advantages of fossil fuels, and I'll give you the facts that I have already on coal, oil and gas. We don't need to look into other energy sources because I'll get more details on the nuclear industry. That's great. See you in two weeks' time. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4 on page 8 of your listening test booklet. Section 4. You will hear a talk from a series of lectures on the survival of our planet. Professor Samson talks about endangered species of flora and fauna. First, you'll have half a minute to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's topic in this series of lectures on our planet 
is about ensuring the survival of our very important plant and animal species. In this lecture, I want to discuss one way that we can do this. No one will ever see a huge dinosaur thundering through the forest. No one will ever see a paradise parrot flash its rainbow colours across the sky. The fact is that many animals and plants have been wiped out. Sadly, they are extinct. It is too late for them. Extinction is forever. We can't do anything about the species that have already disappeared. But today, there are many animals and plants that could still become extinct in the future if we do not act now. They are endangered. The African elephant and rhinoceros have become endangered because of the value of their tusks. Australian parrots and reptiles are smuggled onto planes because certain people in other countries are prepared to pay thousands of dollars for them. And there are many other species around the world that are endangered because they no longer have a place in which to live and reproduce safely. The main cause of extinction is the destruction of habitats. A habitat contains all that a living thing needs to survive. Space, light, water, food, shelter and opportunities for reproduction. The population of the world is growing rapidly. And this is placing great demands on land and resources for housing and for growing food. When vegetation is cleared and swamps are drained for agriculture, mining and suburbs, or when rivers are dammed to store water, plants are destroyed and animal life is threatened. In other words, humans are changing and destroying the habitats of animals and plants, which is in turn reducing their chances of survival. So how can we conserve habitats and help save endangered species? Well, one way is to protect their habitats permanently in national parks or nature reserves. National parks have been created in many countries. They encourage people to enjoy the beauty and diversity of the animals and plants that live there without harming them. By supporting and visiting these parks, people can become more aware of the species that live there and how the parks work to protect them. It is very important that, when visiting a national park, we keep them safe for future generations of plants and animals by obeying a few rules. Firstly, follow the fire regulations. Don't throw cigarettes or build fires, except at certain times of the year in especially allocated areas and facilities. Secondly, remember to leave pets at home. Pets, such as cats or dogs, can hunt birds or other small animals. Some pets might even escape and become a serious threat. Thirdly, place all rubbish in a bin or take it home. Plastic bags or leftover food are dangerous to the animals and harm the environment. Don't pick the flowers or damage the plants. Flowers create the next generation of the plant. Also, for the same reason, birds' eggs must be left in their nests. The loss of species in the past is sad. However, there is hope for the future. Despite the demands of our increasing population, we can work to protect the plant and animal species we still have. So I would like to conclude by saying that I believe that, with strong public awareness and support of these national parks and reserves, the future of endangered species can be ensured. That is the end of the listening test. You now have half a minute to check your answers. <laughs>